Um, so this is the obviously the big play to digs down the field. He got a five. Uh, Josh Allen got a five point one EPA on this play alone. It's obviously, it's a, it's a bomb. That's probably why uh, a wicked bomb. So as you can see across the board, they're playing that cover zero look. They got everyone up near line of scrimmage, and I thought. Um, two things that come to mind when I think about the cover zero looks from this game. I feel like Ken Dorsey and the offensive staff um, were dead set on picking up these pressures, making sure they knew who their assignment was because for a lot of these cover zero blitzes, the zero blitzes weren't the issue in this game. Mm -hmm. They were actually the five and six man pressures. These cover zero blitzes and looks were actually picked up quite well when they actually did bring guys um, like on this play. Uh, the, the second thing about, uh, the, you know, the cover zero looks that um, I noticed in this game, it, it was almost like the Dolphins were expecting Josh to kind of continuously drop deep into the pocket like you see him drift back mm. to buy time. So they were kind of going to a spot, and then Josh was just stopping, and he was able to set up in the pocket, which you'll see on this play uh, once we let it roll. But uh, cover zero look. Again, setting the protection. What they're doing is they're sending uh, Deion Dawkins, the left tackle, sliding everyone to the right. They're bringing Devin Singletary and Dawson Knox across the formation to pick it up. It's a max protection. And Josh calls it when he sees this zero pressure. Watch him right there, top of the head, max protection. And watch Knox come in a little further. And they're setting up that max protection. So only three guys are going into a route. And you see that little that little sign from Josh Allen, that go, go route sign. He gives that to Gabriel Davis later on that first deep shot um, in the fourth quarter that everyone complained about. Josh <laughs> Allen gave him that signal. Um, so they max protect it. So there are only three guys in the route. Um, Josh wants to go for the throat here, which it's a smart play. Stefan Diggs gets that separation. He's able to drop it in the bucket and uh, a great throw. But man, kudos to the protection, right? Talk about uh, the protection from this angle and how they kind of set it up to pick up everyone. Yeah, you get the, you know, you're highlighting 22 right there. Um, and you see the slide action from everyone inside of him. So from Roger Saffold over, you see where Dawson Knox is going to pick up Bradley Chubb, number two. And then basically they're sliding that offensive line over. So that way, Devin Singletary, as Eric has highlighted there, yeah. he knows he's already got his eyes locked onto Eric Rowe. So you see the slide from everyone. Dawkins slides down as well, picks up 22. Singletary knows he's coming over. He's picking up Eric Rowe. This is a really good blitz pickup against cover zero. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like you said, this wasn't unique to this one cover zero look. The Bills picked it up well in this game. And this is the risk that you run when you and show it, cover zero. And it's unfair, right? It's unfair to these corners. Yes. They're not supposed to have this much time. Watch no. Howard to the top, right? Like he's like, okay, ball should be coming out. It's oh, it's not. Diggs is going deep. <laughs> he's waiting. Like, and again, this is this is third and 15. So the yeah. Dolphins defenders are thinking this ball has to come out quick. We're gonna make a play on the ball, or we're gonna come forward and make a play. Like they're sitting and expecting it. Um, Darius Slay from the Philadelphia Eagles retweeted this play and had a really good comment saying like, man, this is unfair to ask for a defensive back against cover zero. Cause the ball, like this isn't supposed to happen. So what the bills do on this play again, this is also a microcosm of what we've been talking about because look at Gabriel Davis on the out, like the smart or the conservative play, I should say that has the highest odds of completion is just throwing it down to Gabriel Davis right there. And then maybe you hope he breaks a tackle. Maybe the defender makes a misstep. That's they, they, they trap that. Normally Correct. They'll, they'll call a banjo there. He'll trap the out, and then the other guy will spin to the top. And they've done this. They did this several yep. times in this game. So they're trying to bait you into yep. those looks. So someone's going to see this and be like, well, he should have thrown it to Gabriel Davis. But the, the read is Stephon Diggs, especially when, you know, if you're even, you're leaving. Mm -hmm. And you have the sticks marked right there. Like you need to get that first down. Diggs is in one-on-one -on -one coverage. You got your boy who's one of the best receivers in football in a situation where the defensive back is at a disadvantage and you take the shot. This, this call, I, I'm, I don't want to make this blanket statement because I don't want people to take it the wrong way. This is almost the same type of mindset as the shot to Gabriel Davis later in the game. The only difference is Josh Allen delivers an absolute dime. Like yep. that's the only difference. The execution is better. The yep. idea behind it, the reasoning behind it all, because of what Miami's doing, because of what you're trying to do on offense, it's the same premise. The only difference is the execution. But again, like we continue to say, that's what Miami is banking on. Because even though this is a great throw from Josh Allen, it's a quote unquote lower percentage throw because of how far downfield it is. But it happens 
because of the execution. The route by Stephon Diggs, his ability to track the ball, Josh Allen's pinpoint accuracy, and then the pass protection up front to slide that line mm-hmm. all the way over. Knox and Singletary are in man pickups. They both pick up their guys. The line slides to the left and gums it up. Boom, you get a huge gain. And you gouge Miami and you make them pay for giving you that look. Yeah, and you know, on the very next play, I like this prior to the snap though, because they have Javon Holland right here making it look like he's in man coverage on Dawson Knox. So Josh calls the alert. He's like, we got the man coverage. I'm going to try to work him on the slide route and have Holland have to work through all this traffic all the way across the field, try to get some leverage on him, um, have him get caught in traffic. Um, But the Dolphins actually don't have him travel Mm -hmm. with him. What they do is they peel the end man on the line of scrimmage. Baker, with that slide route, you see everyone kind of going to the middle of the field, and there's nothing there. You know, it's shut down, and then you see Dawson Knox extend the play, and then, as Ann said, just throwing it to the inside, you know, to the inside by the left ear hole of Baker there, the linebacker, and one hell of a catch from Knox, too. People always say he he makes some of the more difficult catches, but, you know, struggles with some of the easy ones. I mean, this one kind of – this was one of his better catches uh, in his career along the boundary, um, good outside of structure, script type of route and play from Dawson Knox. This is a, I can't believe it. He just one hands it and then manages to like get, he brings it in and then manages to get the knee down in the bounds hand, right? and yeah. the hand, just the hand. <laughs> beautiful play. And I love that. Uh, yeah. The, when I said into the ear hole, the helmet, uh, Dan comes in and says, yeah, right by the blow hole. That's exactly right. It just whizzes <laughs> by Baker's head right into Knox. And this is also one from like a momentum standpoint, especially early on in the game. Granted Miami turned the tide a little bit. This one, you're like, if you're the defense, you fooled Josh Allen, you executed well, you had a good call, you yes. covered everything up, Great and then point. Josh Allen just beats you by going off script and using his athleticism and making a ridiculous throw. And not only does he make a ridiculous throw, Dawson Knox makes a ridiculous catch. Mm-hmm. Like, you're, you're sitting there just being like, dude, like, really? But this is... This is the give and take of Josh Allen, like his ability to pull these plays out of his hat that very few, if any, can make. Granted, he may make some throws that may seem foolish at times, but more often than not, he makes the spectacular play happen. And when it does, it's huge for the Bills, and it's a huge momentum takeaway uh, take away or piece. That's not good verbiage, but whatever. It takes away <laughs> momentum from their opponent. That's what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, he had seven big-time throws in this game. Seven. That's the most he's had all season. I was say that's a that, lot for people who don't know that. Seven. That's a lot. Yeah. That's he had a 17.1% big time throw percentage. The number obviously the top um all season. It looks like the second best game was the week six game against Kansas City, where he had six big time throws. Um yeah. after that, it's Pittsburgh week five. So he had some big time throws. Yes, there were mm-hmm. some turnovers. Um, he had some turnover worthy plays. Uh, that was at six percent for this game. But I just don't think people realize like how big he's playing. Yes, he's got some turnovers. His big time throw percentage this year is eight. The that's obviously the highest he's had his entire career. The next best year was 2020, where he had a 6.1. All mm-hmm. right. So by season 2018, when we're talking big time throw percentage, 2018 he was at 4.9. 2019 was 2.8. So we went backwards. 2020 was 6.1. 2021 was 5.9. He has eight, and that's number one in the league. And, I mean, by a good margin, too. If we look at quarterbacks that uh, had over 50% of the dropbacks this year, so Josh Allen is is number one at big-time throw percentage at eight. The next best guy is Aaron Rodgers at 5.7. Huge, huge difference. And if I could add uh, one more piece on that big-time throw piece, in that game against – in this game against Miami in the wild card – he had six of his seven big time throws came 20 yards or more downfield. He had oh. a big time. He had a big time throw percentage of 40% in, <laughs> in this wild card game. And we're 40% mad <laughs> on throws 20 yards downfield. That's and we're ridiculous. mad about throwing it right? deep. Come on but, now. But, but, but that's the also Eric, like that's how th- th- there isn't one way to win a football game. Some teams run it more. Some teams run more zone and some teams run more gap. Some teams pass it more. Some attack vertically. Some run, you know, the Shanahan offense. Some run want to run a West Coast. You can win a game by mm-hmm. dinking and dugging and nickeling and diming and being surgical up and down the field, or you can 
be less efficient, but generate explosives and gash your opponent and still win. And that's what the Bills did in this game. Granted, it's sometimes it may have looked ugly or felt stagnant because they were going three and out or they were punting the ball. But when you take the game as a whole, those explosive plays are what made the difference. And again, it's just another way of how you can win a football. We're thankful to have another week of Bills football here in the Cover One film room. We're also thankful to our sponsor of this show, Nickel City Cigars. You can find their website in our episode show notes, whether here on YouTube or any one of the podcasting apps or platforms, go check them out. We we love the partnership with them. We love their new age take on the cigar game. We love that they have an arcade inside. We love that they have local, uh, you know, Buffalo craft brews and different kinds of liquors and the ability to order online, pick up in store, have it delivered to you. They're just, it, they just take a really cool approach to the cigar game, which is a very old world type of aspect. And they put a new age spin on it and they really niche down into it like we have here at right. Cover One. So we're tremendously um proud of our partnership with them they're you know veteran owned which is also another uh yeah. cool piece and advantage to them use the promo code cover one whether on their website or in store get 20 percent off of your order when you do that so major shout out to nickel city cigars